Now, what do you... I mean, you're a royal expert, Jenny. Nobody knows more about this family than you. Uh, what do you think uh, we are going to remember from this documentary series in, say, five years' time? I think we'll remember the central allegation made by Harry that uh, he and his wife were bullied out of the royal family by William. I think that was a very important accusation not necessarily, necessarily stood up with evidence, and that's what's short. In all six hours of quite generalised accusations and allegations, there's not a lot of concrete evidence, and I, I'm sorry about that because uh, I think we needed that. Mm. Why might William have wanted to do that, if indeed he did? Well, William is known to have you know, quite a short temper, as, as Charles has, um, and he, I... I do not think that he would bully his younger brother, but he did clearly lose his temper. I mean, you know, they have a Harry saying it was terrifying to be shouted and screamed at by my brother. I have no reason to doubt that that, that happened. Um, but he would have no motive in bullying his brother out of the royal family. The royal family, you know, had recognised early on that Meghan would have been a great attribute to the royal family, just what a modern monarchy needed. But by that stage, the Sandringham summit, it just was shot to pieces. Do you think that they have some very valid complaints to make about the British media and that feeling certainly for Meghan that she just couldn't live the life, any kind of life that she wanted to live because it was so claustrophobic and she was so surrounded by them, I should say us, really? I do have sympathy. Um, I think she should have been prepared for the goldfish bowl. I also think that it's rather disingenuous of them to, to repeatedly use shots of paparazzi or photographers um, in who were, which were taken in America, you know, when she arrived for her baby shower. Um, some of the pictures we know are actually false, nothing to do with uh, Harry and Meghan. But I do have sympathy. Um, what I question is why she was so, so unprepared. Uh, apparently they feel that they should have been given more guidance, um, although the palace say they, that she was handed a dossier, that the Queen's former assistant private secretary was persuaded not to retire and to, to look after them, one of the Queen's really right-hand women. Um, but in all of that, why did they need a flunky? Why did they need a courtier to tell Meghan how to act and what life would be like? For goodness sake, she was marrying a member of the royal family. Didn't he know? Couldn't he warn her? But isn't her case slightly different, Jenny? That she just had more coming at her than any mm. young woman uh, had ever had before. I don't think she did. I think Diana had a great deal more coming at her. You know, there were... Yeah, but she oh. didn't live in a world of social media, though. And, and she wasn't online mixed race. Trolling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, online trolling, social media, absolutely. I mean, that's a ghastly world. We all know that. We all get trolled and it's, 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 it's despicable. I completely get that. But as regards the uh, intrusion of photographers, I think Diana had it a lot worse. But yes, I have sympathy for her. It was, it was a tough gig. It always is. Being a member of the royal family isn't easy, but she should have been more prepared. Right. Um, well, have, I've only watched episode four um, of the, the latest volume, Jenny, but I, I was really struck by the stuff over which Harry and Meghan couldn't have any control. The fact that the newspapers were preferring to put Meghan on the front page and not Kate and or William. I mean, that's indisputable and it appears to have caused problems, i.e. jealousy. I mean, that and that isn't their fault, is it? It's simply that Megan's a beautiful woman, it made for an incredible image, and the papers loved her. But do you think anybody could have stopped the damage that that clearly did to family relations? Well, that's gone on through the generations. You know, Diana was the new star, she got all the headlines. Uh, Fergie was the new star, she got them. This is what we, the media, do with our royal family. Yeah, and it's sometimes uh, very cruel and sometimes, frankly, vicious, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're sometimes, you know, we're very, not a very nice profession. I completely concede that. But I also would say that an awful lot of the headlines they used to stand up their suggestions were from uh, American tabloids, the National Enquirer, the Daily Beast, New Idea from Australia. I was taking a note of all the headlines from elsewhere. Um, I'm not disputing that we didn't have headlines over here. Certainly, they really got it in for the Daily Mail. And the Mail seems to have been the catalyst very, very sadly, Harry alleges um, not only for the 
exit from the royal family. But very sadly, Harry alleges that the Daily Mail, what they did to Meghan, his words, were created the situation and the stress where she had a miscarriage. Yeah, right. which is just so sad, <laughs> so yeah. sad. But when Meghan has made claims before that I think in any other situation would elicit a lot of genuine sympathy uh, from any viewer or listener, uh, there seems to be so much other noise going on around them that that bit gets missed. So when she says that she's been the victim of racism, that doesn't get heard. When she said she was really struggling after the birth of her babies, you know, appearing in public... That doesn't get heard. When she says she has a miscarriage, that doesn't get heard. So do you think it's just a bit unfair or do you think after the settling of a bit of time we might feel more kind of warm towards her when we're out of this storm? Uh, but not heard by whom? I don't hear very many people showing any sympathy for Meghan. I hear an awful lot of people saying yada, 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 yada. But I think, to be fair, a lot of young people do have sympathy perhaps, for Meghan. Yeah. Perhaps. Or perhaps they're simply not the voice that we will ever hear. It's the voice of outrage that you want to get on air at the moment, that you want, you know, that people want to post up on social media. It's just quite imbalanced, don't you feel? Well, I think we did hear a lot about their complaints about racism. I mean, Harry issued a statement about it really, really early on, before they were engaged even. Um, he, he put that in the public arena and there was a lot of press about it. As regards her miscarriage, she chose quite understandably to keep that private for a certain amount of time and then wrote a very, very moving article about it. So we heard all about her her miscarriage. And I, I agree actually with uh, Jane that I think younger people, I think this documentary is swinging opinion in um, Megan's favour with, with younger people. Um, and that's fine. I mean, I've got sympathy with her. I think she was going to be brilliant in the royal family. I'm really, really sorry it didn't work out. I'm really pleased that they are so blissfully happy. There's montage after montage of them skipping across the sand <laughs> and being happy. And that's lovely. As well. They have found each other, haven't they, Jenny? They well, have I, definitely I, found each I, other. I honestly <laughs> mean it when I say I hope they continue to be that happy forever. Um, there was the suggestion in the trailer, I mean trailers are they're there to entice us and the, the trailer for this volume two certainly did suggest that we might be um, about to hear something that would rock our royal worlds. It still hasn't quite happened has it Jenny and I suppose you wonder whether that might be in the book or I'm being very careful here or maybe not. <laughs> Well, as I say, I, I think the most startling allegation is the one of bullying. And also, um, Harry says towards the end that, um, well, actually, after the Duke's funeral, we always we all wondered, you know, did they seem to be walking together? Did they chat? Did they discuss it all? Well, it, he said it was hard, but they did discuss it. But um, he now does not expect any uh, apology um, or any accountability, accountability. Genuine, that's the word, genuine apology or genuine accountability so maybe that's actually what he wants he wants his his brother and his father to stand up in public and say i'm sorry harry yeah i mean i know it's old hat to say this and it's been said by other people Go but on, say it love. well i'm just gonna say no i just would be heartbroken if my children ever fell out with each other in this way I oh, I, I'd be I, heartbroken if either of my children married into the royal family. And that as well, to be honest. 